All right, fans, much awaited regional predictions here at PAWrestling.com. Uh, I'm joined tonight with Nate Heckenberger from the Daily Local, and as always, uh, was become my partner in crime, Glenn Kaiser. Guys, thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for spending some time. Happy to be here. Having us. Uh, you know, again, I know it's already been asked about at the full on the forum. Uh, for those that are wondering, it is Wednesday evening, February 28th at 8.15 p.m. We're getting started here, and we're going to rock and roll through all uh, all brackets. Uh, we're going to talk good, bad, and different uh, wrestlebacks, and we're going to give you our opinions on the top five, top six, actually, at every weight class. And we're going to try to, you know, hit every other little nook and cranny that comes with the brackets and uh, things that, uh, you know, to make you wear and put you guys in the know as best we can. I, I just, I, th- like everyone else, this is the, the best week of the year and, and the best weekend of the year here for District One because we get to showcase our uh, our best and brightest. Uh, at a lo- on a local stage, um, you know, states is still states. Don't get me wrong, but I know from a personal standpoint, I really look forward to the regional weekend, seeing all of District One competing uh, and uh, and punching that ticket to Hershey. I don't know about uh, yeah. you. I mean, Joe, I just told you I was, in the background. I had uh, our preseason show, and yeah. um, we we were pretty spot on. I got I got to give us some credit in terms of the, uh, the guys we identified that not only were returning guys, but just in general. Um, this has been an outstanding year for District 1. I mean, both AA and AAA. But at AAA, we just own some weight classes. I mean, it's going to be fun going through these uh, brackets down low and a couple other weight classes that we just totally own. Um, you know, m- maybe, you know, in Hershey, like, we're we're like a district that people have to look out for. I mean, and in the old days, you know, we went up there and we felt good. I mean, I, I talked about this in the previous show and, and we'd go up there in the first round and we would just get hammered and we would see guys dropping that we thought were going to be on the podium and they had to start battling back, uh, you know, that first night. So um, this is just going to be an unbelievable tournament and some of the best wrestlers in the state are right coming out of the Southeastern region all the way down at Oxford. Yes. Looking forward to going back to Oxford. Great facility. They always put on a great tournament. Uh, you know, n- nothing. I mean, Satterton does as well. I mean, been the regional tournaments there, Rock South, Rock North. They all, it, 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 when you get to the regional level, the, the schools that host it uh, do their, do, do their, uh, do their very best to put on a good, um, you know, put their best foot forward, not just for the, the athletes, not just for the fans, but for the coaches as, and officials as well. Uh, so, um, you know, again, thanks to, uh, to Oxford and, and uh, their wrestling club and their boosters and Tony Fabry for taking this on. Uh, they do have one of the premier spots in District One to host this event. And yeah. and, uh, and Jamie know, candidate too. I mean, he he just runs a tight ship there at Oxford, and and wrestling is one of his uh, favorite sports. So they they just do a tremendous job. I mean, almost flawless tournament run there every year. Yeah. So Nate, you want anything you going to add uh, to before we get started here? No, I'm ready to go. Let's go. All right, so to to uh to piggyback on what Glenn said, uh, if we look, you know, Glenn talking about where we have a lot of um uh talent in certain weight classes, where we start and where we end are probably our two deepest weight classes in District One, and uh, you know we're starting one hundred and seven pounds, and you know right off the bat we have the top three ranked guys in the state, uh, you know Dominic Morrison from Hatboro, Glenn's Glenn's guy, we got Alex Diaz, we got Max Tansini. And, and that's just the guys that we know about. We're going to talk about some others right now. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to put the brackets up just so everyone knows, just like years past, they are the brackets that I put together. Um, and then Glenn and um, Nate are going to you know, tell I, me where I really, I'm wrong. I really have them. I just don't do this. Yes. The top of my um, I... No, li- the labor of love of, of you know going through all the brackets and doing it. Uh, it's much easier to do it Glenn's way, in my opinion. Uh, however, uh, you know, that doesn't translate well to the screen. So, um, you know, but I said they're, they're my my predictions. And then, uh, like I said, Glenn and Nate will tell me where I'm wrong, uh, just as we normally do. So we'll have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, for your entertainment purposes only. So give me a second here while I share my screen. So we'll start with the top half of the bracket. Hopefully uh, you guys, can you see the screen now? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So that means everyone else can. So uh, if you see, you know, you can look right on, see where I go with this, uh, these first round matchups. Max Tansini, the one seed returning state medalist from Perk Valley, 35 and two in a year. One of those, you know, um, uh, 
you know, I think he, I think it's, it's his weight class to lose. Um, you know, I think others are going to disagree with me. A lot of people given Dominic Morrison, uh, his due and, and he is a super talented freshman. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to take anything away from, from him. I got to see him wrestle that semifinal between him and Diaz is going to be an absolute war. I watched them go at it at escape the rock in a one, nothing match. It was pretty entertaining, a lot of high level wrestling. Uh, but I think a lot of people kind of just kind of not, not talking about Tansini. Now, again, you know, while I say I think Tansini wins this weekend, if you ask me to, to make the prediction next weekend, uh, it could it could end in, in several different ways than what it is right now with, with the talented three wrestlers we have here. Um, but if we look just a little bit further into this uh, bracket, I, uh, Bryce Boyer makes the semifinals in his, uh, in his freshman year. Uh, Dominic Powell gets the win in the first round, but, um, you know, he's going to run into Boyer and Boyer's going to be too much for him. Uh, it's one of those situations where, you know, Boyer's just been in way more tough matches than Powell has been. Um, you know, Dominic Morris and Eddie Alvarez getting a tough draw there. Alvarez, who's enjoying a great second half of his senior year, really impressed with him as a, uh, as a senior in this council rock South lineup. Again, another one of those guys that kind of had to wait his turn and he's making the most of it. Um, the, I think the the best match of this first round at um, in this weight class is going to be the Brady Sizeoff there in Minicozi match. I apologize if I'm not saying that correctly. Uh, this one's kind of like a toss up. They can go either way, but you know Minicozi with just a lot more matches under his belt uh, and you know just a, a hungry freshman there from Sun Valley uh, taking out the senior from Springford. Uh, McFadden and Diaz round out our quarter finalists, and you see. Uh, while McFadden is going to have, um, you know, I think a lot of success in the future uh, at, in District 1 for Penridge uh, this year, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. I think, um, you know, in this weight class is just so loaded. Um, you know, Diaz and Morrison, I have Morrison beating Diaz and Tansini winning the finals. But this is where, you know, the tickets are really punched here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you can't. You can't. Oh, my bad. I was going to get my. Yeah. Whoa, sorry, my bad. I know, bad, you're, I know you're trying to scoot down low there, but we're oh, I'm not to... trying. To, I'm not shy away from anything, Glenn. I know where this is going. Yeah, we're gonna have to address this. Um, so first of all, I agree that uh, I have exactly the same way to the semifinals. Um, I do have Morrison beating Diaz as well. That is going to be a key match at 107 pounds, not only for seeding at states, um, but for confidence for for both those guys. Uh, Morrison has never lost to Diaz. Um, throughout his career and, and that's you know something that he he is probably going to be in his head but um tansini and marson is a really an intriguing matchup tansini and marson have not seen each other and this is where i go to the strength of schedule um marson has seen the best of the best in uh pennsylvania uh and at the national ranks he's wrestled bachman uh he beat the dude from Central Dolphin. He has wrestled everybody in the top three. Are you four, are you talking about five. strength of schedule and illegal schedules too, or just strength uh, of schedule you know, overall? It, it, it didn't take you long to get there. Um, <laughs> so it really uh, it, it really comes down for me to that Morrison has been battle tested all season long, and Tensini has that one loss, so he's got a chip on his shoulder to you know that he, losing to Diaz early. Um, Diaz held that number one ranking for a while. Uh, so did Tansini for a little bit out of the gate until Diaz beat him. So these are three of the top guys in the state of Pennsylvania in AAA. Um, so it, it's going to be uh, a tremendous weight class to, to keep your eye on. But I have Morrison winning here. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, of the, of the kids I've seen at this weight this year, Morrison definitely uh, showed me something to keep the rock. Uh, very impressive with the freshman. Obviously, Tansini, you know, state medalist returning, um, got a great pedigree. I think Morrison's up for the fight. It seems like he he didn't get phased too much in the in the big spot there to keep the rock. And like you said, he he wrestled a lot of tough kids this year. Um, you know, just bringing it up, you know, not having Braden Siegel there who, who wasn't able to make weight last year. I don't know if that changes the uh, the semifinals at all, but definitely on the bottom half and the consolations, not having him kind of opens up a spot for one of these other guys to kind of slide in. Uh, but yeah, I think Boyer makes the semis. Uh, yeah, I think, I think your semifinals look, look right. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fun, a fun final for sure. All right. So let's jump, jump down to uh, the wrestle backs. Um, you know, a lot of those quarterfinal win, or I'm sorry, those first round winners are really at a disadvantage because of the, the, um, just how tough this weight class is with the exception of Eddie Alvarez. Um, I really think Eddie Alvarez, you see him there uh, coming out of that um, 
all the way from the left and uh, against Brady Sizov. Uh, again, beating Powell Alvarez. Uh, again, top to bottom coming out of uh, his schedule with Rock South, wrestling Powell from Upper Dublin. Uh, and just no comparison as to far who's been more battle tested, uh, who has better partners in the room. Uh, Alvarez beating Kramer, uh, losing in, in that Rock South, Rock North matchup to Diaz. Uh, and then Alvarez and McFadden, who have had two very unique um, uh, results. You know, McFadden pinning them early in the year in a match where Diaz or Alvarez was winning and, and then Diaz coming, I'm sorry, Alvarez, excuse me, uh, coming back at district duels and beating McFadden, uh, in the championship match. Yeah, but I, I don't, think, I, I think I McFadden say, gets his, uh, gets, you know, gets out, um, when it, when it matters most. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have the Boyer Diaz, uh, in there for the, the consolation final with Diaz winning. Um, but I have a little bit differently. Um, I don't know if you've seen, uh, Dominic Powell wrestle Joe, but um, he is he's a he's a very solid grappler. Um, he's had some good matches with uh, Morrison. Um, he, he's gotten uh, the matches have tightened up a little bit with Morrison uh, the last couple times they've met. Um, and I have I have Powell uh, beating uh, Alvarez, and, and that changes things down there because Powell gets by Kramer. Uh, no problem. And I do have Powell in there against McFadden. And if you watch McFadden, the end of the season, he has not been where he was at the beginning of the season. Uh, state duels, um, he, he didn't really uh, shine uh, under the big lights there on the giant center floor. I, I just feel like he ha he's feeling some pressure. Um, he's not really opening up. Now, that could change because, you know, things happen at regionals. Um, that we don't expect. I mean, it happens every year. I don't know where it's going to be, but I, I think Powell, um, he, he's up for the challenge. I, I think you're going to see um, a, a different bracket down here, and Powell could be that bracket buster. I, I don't I don't know, yeah, man. It's not Powell. because I coached at Upper Dublin and he's from the SOL. It's just because um, I've seen him wrestle uh, the good competition when he gets it. Because this is a, like you said, this is a strength of schedule thing that you're bringing up with Alvarez and Powell. I just think Powell uh, may surprise some people. So keep an eye on that. Um, that's all I'm saying. And I do have Powell beating McFadden just because I think Powell's on a roll right now and McFadden's not where he was at the beginning of the season. Uh, Powell's wrestled one regional qualifier this year. That's okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to my guns. <laughs> I just think McFadden, you know, with obviously with Martinelli staying at 114, that was just a blessing in disguise to get, you know, those two guys at, at really uh, key weights there. I think McFadden, you know, like you said, he, he did wrestle at States, at the State Duels. You know, he, he won a big match to to help them win a big duel meet there. I think, uh, yeah, I just, I think I just trust the Penridge schedule and the, the Penridge room a little bit more, uh, taking McFadden for fifth place there. But I do think uh, even in the Conti semis against Boyer, I think that's going to be a really good go. Uh, I think, you know, Boyer is obviously very tough, but I think uh, I think McFadden is going to push him there. So that'll be so something to watch as well. 100 percent, Nate. I think those I think overall those um, those constant semi matches are going to be pretty tough with, um, you know, those four wrestlers. If, if those four make it, I mean, don't count out uh, Minikazi. Don't count out, um, you know, him his way in, in there some way, shape or form. Um, you know, he's had some uh, pretty good wins this year. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah he's, he's dangerous. I mean, I think yeah. he's a backup. There's a bracket busted down low here somewhere. Could be right. Minikazi too, because you know Minikazi and McFadden is going to be a great one too. So I mean, I, I just think that you know every every match once you get into that, um, you know, third round Conti match to get into that Conti semifinals are going to be be battles. Uh, and then again, um, the the Conti semis to to get your ticket, um, you know, it's, it's a big deal in this weight class when you have the top three in the weight class. Uh, in the state in your bracket. Right. And like I said, I'm not marrying myself to these being the, the same results next week because it could go a whole bunch of different ways. And, you know, you have to see how the bracket falls when they get out there. So you guys ready to turn the page to 114? Oh, yeah. All right. Here goes 114. I apologize. I don't know why it's um, looks like there's two things on the top there. It is Nelson uh, winning that first match. This is a uh, weight class that, um, you know, it's it's a two horse race, um, in my opinion, and it is um, Nelson and and Martinelli. 
Um, as you see, I, I think Martinelli is the is the the better of this weight class, but I think these two are separating themselves from the rest of the pack at 114 pounds. Yeah, I agree. I think um, yeah, just their 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 skill level, their speed is just uh, what kind of separates them. Obviously, Martinelli is just good at being in those those funky situations and just always seems to end up on top and. You know Nelson. You know first first really state medalist in I think forty years last year. So he's got a a good track record behind him. But obviously, you know these two met last year in the one hundred seven final, and uh, you know Martinelli won that one. So I think you give him the edge. But I do think uh, you know he's got a little tougher road to get to the final. So you know whether that helps him or hurts him, we'll see. Yeah, I'm. I have it the same way um, with Nelson. Uh, and Martinelli in the final, Martinelli winning just because of the fact, you know, that he does have that that big win from last year. But Martinelli at 114, I think, is is much more comfortable, not cutting all the weight. Um, he seems to look like himself now. Um, I, I think he's, you know, kind of in that groove and, and kind of peaking at the right time. So Martinelli, uh, again, you know, obviously if he was down at 107, that would have maybe put McFadden up here at 114. So team-wise for Penn Ridge, uh, for them to be in the hunt for a, a Southeastern region title, this helps big time with Martinelli at 114. Um, in terms of the, you know, Marco loss, um, you, you have, you know, getting into that semifinal, and I have uh, it a little bit differently um, there. So that that's the only difference. I have I have Smith winning uh, there and Smith getting into that semifinal. So that's a big change then down below. Uh, but I do have Lenahan, you know, also there so the loss we'll get to down below. i'm glad you brought that up glenn because that gus smith marco loss match is probably one of the top top three to five uh, matches in the first round that we'll see friday night which oh uh, yeah hands um, down yeah you know what i mean like you know you look at it and like marco loss is the fourth place guy out of the east it just tells you how deep that weight class is um but i think the winner of that match does make the semis and and again i went through that one numerous times and uh i think marco loss gets to gets to win there uh, has had a little bit better uh, competition that he's wrestled against this year, um, you know, and, and he's surrounded by better partners than Gus Smith is this year. You know, this was a year ago uh, in that spring four room, and a little bit I look at it a little bit differently. But I think um, the um, Marco Loss has, has just guys that are pushing him a little bit more in the room on a regular basis. Yeah, um, Council Rock, Council Rock North is you know they they caught fire at the end yep. of the season, um, and they have a, a handful of guys you know, these lightweights all the way up to cement. Um, and they're all banging in a room together. Like you said, that's a great room. So, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I, I another one to watch out for in the first round at this weight class is the uh, John DiOrio kyle Von Schmidt match. Since yeah, Schmidt I was going to say, Von Schmidt to... one, I, 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 I have Von Schmidt there too. Um, but, again, down below, you know, with Von Schmidt against Tulane down there, I mean, that there, there's a lot of – this is a bracket I think that we're going to see down below look different probably on all of our uh, sheets. Nate, what do you so, have down there? Yeah, I mean, on the on the Contes, you mean? I think, uh, I mean, I think Lenahan, if he doesn't beat Martinelli, I think he's the, the class of the, the constellation there. I think uh, he's the favorite to come out in third. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Smith beats Siegel in the in the quarters, and I think they, they both drop down and um, – yeah, I just think uh, I think Smith makes it to the third place match against Lenahan, and then I have uh, I have Siegel beating Von Schmidt for for that last spot in fifth place. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's three, four, or five kids down there that are all in that very close uh, proximity with each other. I think it's going to be some some serious battles. But I just uh, I have a feeling Siegel's going to pull one out this year after taking. Six yeah, I, I have the same way. I have Siegel beating Von Schmidt down there in that fifth place match. But I have it the same way, Joe. You have it with Lenahan for third and and Smith in the fourth spot. So it, it really, that, that first match with loss is a big one. And so is the Von Schmidt uh, match with, with Diorio. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, this, this is one that, again, we have legitimate, you know, top contenders here up and down the bracket. It's not just the, the top guy with Martinelli. I believe he's number two right now uh, in the PA power rankings. But, you know, any any one of these guys down below can get the job done. Yeah, you see that Smith, uh, you know, I have Smith losing that match and, and, and coming out of that, like, big tail there. And he, 
beating Howell, beating Von Schmidt, you know, just stacking wins, beating Talone, uh, and then getting that rematch with loss in the Conti semis. And despite what others say, like, like the wrestle backs aren't wonky. They aren't different. Like you just strap up and wrestle. And I think Smith gets, um, you know, revenge there. Uh, ever having, having gotten his hands on the night before. And, uh, but then ultimately loses to uh, Connor Lenahan from Rock South. It seems like Smith is always just in those matches and, and comes out on top more times than not where, where he just, he always, he just seems like the kid always finds himself going to Hershey, you know, so it's hard to bet against him. Right. And I, no different here. It's just a little bit different path. Probably than other people think, I just think Marco lost a tough matchup for him in that first round. And, you know, I think after Smith has uh ability to wrestle him, um, you know, he gets revenge on the backside. Siegel, yeah, but, uh, I, have, I have lost to Siegel for, for fifth place. I, I don't have Siegel getting out. We shall see. I mean, the, again, there's there's two guys really that are pivotal here. It's Loss and Von Schmidt that are going to be the ones that change the bracket. Um, for probably a lot of people, I think that's a th – those are tough ones to look at. I mean, Von Schmidt just beat Loss pretty handily. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards Von Schmidt, you know, getting, getting through there and, and Loss not being there. So it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, we move on to, uh, you know, further along, we get to 121. I'll just get, I'm not sure. I can always maybe check in my other screen. Looks like you got um, Ziggler winning every weight class. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe I just go back to the... <laughs> He could very well win all these weight classes in the first five. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Um, but, um. So we look, uh, Ziggler is, is by far the class of this weight class. Uh, he was on full display last week, the way he handled himself in, uh, you know, the, the East, um, district and everyone else is wrestling to make it to Hershey. Uh, again, Mason Ziggler of healthy, like I said, uh, wins this weight class hands down. That's, that's zero disrespect to anyone else in this weight class for a simple fact that like, he's just a really good wrestler. He's great. And, you know, it just speaks to, like, the, the level difference between uh, him and some of the other guys this weight class. And some of the other guys this weight class are going to potentially find themselves on the on the podium at Hershey and have already been on the podium. Uh, just he's he's uh, he's a, a talent. Yeah, so, I agree. I mean, Cole, Cole Coffin, you know, um, and Ritter here and McFarlane. I mean, these guys, th those two guys have state medals as well. I mean, Coffin – um, has been the, the best challenge to Ziggler so far this year. And even in that match, it's usually a major decision. So there is a drop-off here with Ziggler and the rest. But I'll tell you what, the, the rest of this weight class is going to be, you know, a battle. I mean, there's there's guys in here that have been to regionals more than one time. They've been to Hershey more than one time. They've medaled. Um, this is just a, a great weight class. Um, but Ziggler is going to be one of the guys we're going to keep an eye on at Hershey. Um, I don't think he slows down at all here. His eye is on the prize, um, and, you know, it, it is everyone else kind of battling for second and third place here. The best match in this weight class on Friday night is going to be that mcfarland Sheshniak match. I'm sure Nate has it different, and that's fine. Um, and, you know, again, Sheshniak has had a great season. I just think McFarland's been here before. Um, and, uh, you know, I think his ability to pin kids at the rate of what she does, uh, is a difference maker here. His ability to turn kids. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, I see all, you also just dismissed Allgaier against Arabone too there. Uh, <laughs> you know, that allgaier has been, been to regionals. This is his third appearance. Um, he's wrestling a lot better. He had a great match with McFarland, uh, in the semifinals last weekend. Um, so I, I think there's going to be some different guys again down low in both our brackets certainly if if Nate has uh Shizniak um getting getting through there so I think we should go down down below and I I think we all agree that it's Ziggler and, and Coffin in the finals right Nate yeah I just think I mean you look at this bracket and there's nine seniors which is kind of rare for a for a lightweight there's nine seniors five guys have been to states it's just you know it's just loaded there's no real real shortcuts in this bracket um yeah, like you said, McFarlane Chesniak, that's uh that could go either way. You look at some of the results last week from from McFarlane and, and they don't pop off the screen. I wasn't there obviously to see it, so I'm not sure, but obviously his track record and he's obviously undefeated this year. 
it's hard to bet against them. But uh, I mean, yeah, I think that's going to be a really good go. I think uh, Chesnick has has looked really good, and uh, I mean, you know, if he wants to break through, it, it, it's going to help him a lot to to get that win and make it to semis because it's going to be some real tough sledding down low. Yeah. So as we drop down low, we see um, again. You know, I think I think the um, the probably one of the better matches you'll see that um and it's you know it involves your guy al guyer and al guyer carmen match is gonna be a really good one um but like ultimately they kind of that runs into chesniak i think or or for you guys that, who have chesniak winning uh would be mcfarland and that's just a tough just like like to, to nate's point a tough it's a tough route coming through these wrestlebacks yeah, if yeah. you look at a guy like uh, Timmy Kearney, you know, um, you know, Sun Valley kid has been to regions all, all all three years, his fourth year now. He's sitting on ninety seven wins. You know, I think he gets that first one in the, in the first round, and then there's a tough one against Ryder, and then you're 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 searching for those two more wins just to get into a hundred because he didn't have that full freshman year. But uh, I mean, he's got to he's gonna have to knock off somebody, Kane or Shesniak or whoever ends up there, and then you know just just hope he can. And get through there. It's some of the stuff you think about with some of these these seniors who had the shortened COVID class. But yeah, in terms of uh, matchups down there, it's just uh, I think I agree with your top five. I don't I don't have Keen getting out, but I think you. I mean, having to fa- to face him twice in, in two days is is not easy for Chesniak if if that ends up being him being in that spot. Uh, obviously, if Andre can win his uh, his quarterfinal against McFarland, it puts him in a much better spot to get out. But uh, yeah, I think that's. I mean that's a big one right there. We we keep going back to it. McFarland Chesnick. Whoever wins that one, I think is 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 in a much sweeter spot to get out, and the other guys is really going to have to fight. Yeah, yeah I, I I have it the same with the McFarland and and Ritter there. Ritter there. I mean, that's probably going to be your third fourth fourth place. But I I have uh, Chesnick getting out, beating Allgaier, just because of the way the bracket lays out down there. Um, I have not seen. Uh, Kane come up with a big win. Um, he's going to have to do that. He's going to, like you said, he's going to have to beat some good guys. He's going to have to beat Kearney uh, the way we have it, all have it right now. So, um, and, and Arabone or Allgaier, whoever's there. Um, so it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting um, on, on what this bracket looks like uh, after the quarterfinals. I think that's where you're going to see uh, this bracket play out. But uh, again, it, this is a, a bracket where we're going to see state place winners coming coming out of 121 uh, from District One. So to to Glenn, or I'm sorry, Nate, to you to what you said about Kearney, you know, you, you feel for a guy that didn't get the full freshman year because of COVID, and he's on the cusp of that 100 wins. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice that 100 wins to make states. You know, wrestling tougher competition. Uh, but he could have the best of both here. He gets those. If he gets to nine, he gets to ninety nine. He will have two chances to get the states and get that hundredth win, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think if he can beat Kane, if he can pull that upset, I think he has a shot to make it to the Conti semis. And, and he's right, one hundred percent. The winner of that Kearney Kane match wins the next one, in my opinion. Yeah. So I mean, so. He pulled it up last year it was against uh, Heimbach, I think, right? So yes. I mean, he's he's been here before, but obviously he's, it's uh, it's going to be well earned if he does it. So, all right, uh, he's got a little more to wrestle for. So I don't know, uh, you know, if I had that information at the time, maybe my bracket looked a little different. But you know, uh, I I did it straight up. I did it without any of the uh, uh, outside st- um, stories attached. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's get to one twenty seven. And again, this download, I may go back just to the uh, the original website from which I annotated the brackets. Uh, it does say Semmons, as you can see. Uh, I think with the with the vacating of um, um, Ziggler, this, um, at, well, Mutarelli, that's a whole other story we can talk about. Uh, but not having Mutarelli or Sem, um, Ziggler in this weight class, it, it is Aaron Semmons' weight. Uh, although Woolishin has been closing the gap on him. Um, I just think it's still it's going to be Stemmons' weight to lose. Um, I think Dalton Pedro wins his match over Ryan Hayes. Uh, Warkentine getting a win. He's been there before. He's been in the States. Uh, Zach Jaffe not only wins his first match, but also then Warkentine gets to the semis. Uh, Finn McBride and uh, Isaac Williams, I think, you know, his experience of ben being here before uh, gets him that win on the first round over um, Islinski from Boyertown. 
McBride went in there, and then uh, Murray beating Plant, um, and you know talented freshman from Upper Perk that kind of flew under the radar. You know, thirty-four and seven as a freshman. Upper Perk does not wrestle a, uh, you know, they're not. There's no way she ever forms. They have a cupcake schedule. They they wrestle. They get some good competition, and they're doing some good things up there. And then uh, we'll end with Willis and McBride, Jaffa and Semi for my finalists. Yeah, I I want to just check in on this Woolish and McBride match. So this is where um, I think you see um, the the rematches from districts and a season long competition against um, you know Council Rock South and Penridge and that rivalry going. And this is going to be a big one for the uh, team title. Um, I have McBride uh, getting the best of Woolish in here. Uh, even though Wilson is wrestling really, really good. I mean, he's on top of his game. I just think McBride's going to come back and avenge that loss here. And I think I have a couple of these uh, throughout. And again, you know, there's a trend here with the SOL teams, um, you know, with with the semifinals and the champions. Um, that, that SOL and, um, you know, the District 1, you know, tournaments that we've seen, th these guys have been going at it, uh, you know, all season long uh, at high level tournaments you know district one duels now, now district one east here for these guys i just think this is one where mcbride gets it now it doesn't mean that it's going to change the result when we get to hershey because they may see each other again for a medal so th this is one of those weight classes where I, I just see that somebody's going to get one uh get one back and it might be mcbride here so that that's my big change here i have jaffe getting into the the semis as well. So everything else is the same except for I had McBride winning, winning over Wolosham. He's, yeah, like he's not going to like that pick. <laughs> huh? He's, uh, he, he's going to be giving me the business. Yeah, he'll be all right. Okay, uh, second straight weight that we've had three out of four from the East making the semifinals. I think it's, uh, you know, kind of talked about on the, the forum. seems like East is, is the clear, uh, the clear power this year in terms of the sections coming this way. Not surprising with the Council Rocks and, and some of those programs, Penridge and all that, but uh, you really start to see it. Some of these lightweights, um, the Warkentine Jaffe match. I think that's the most intriguing one of this uh, the Friday night in this bracket. Uh, Jaffe is just totally comfortable winning two to one, three to two. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not electric on his feet. He's, he's pretty tough on on top, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if Warkentine can can score from his feet and kind of push the tempo because Jaffe's really really good at slowing you down. Let's move down to the lower half. And no real surprises down here. There's no one that's you know coming out of that first round loss. Cause I think this bracket, this this bracket's a little top heavy. You know, like you have like uh five five, six tough guys. And other than that, like it, it's there's a little bit of a drop off. So um, you know, you see just in that Conti quarterfinal, you have Murray, Williams, working time, and uh Pedrick. And then, you know, with the drop downs of McBride and Jaffe, uh, working time Williams, Jaffe winning, beating Williams, and then McBride beating Jaffe for third place. Yeah, yeah I mean, I like Nate, the yeah, Nate think, you know uh, this bracket down low better than I do. Yeah, I mean, I just think I like the Williams pick. I think he's going to be one of those guys, even – even early on in quarters, you know, Williams getting another shot of McBride, just the whole Penridge Quaker Town rivalry and familiarity. But I think, you know, I think uh, you know, he comes in as the four seed from the East, but I think he's just one of those guys that have been in, in a million tough matches with Quaker Town, state duels, all these tournaments. He's been in, this is his fourth time, I think, at regionals. He's just one of those those kids I don't think you're going to want to mess with down that down low. He just knows how to grind stuff out. So um, I have Warkentine beating Jaffe in the quarter. So I had him beating Williams for that third place match and losing to McBride. But I, I think Jaffe and Williams is going to be, you know, a slugfest. Uh, I have Jaffe beaten Williams, but I, I'm hesitant to pick that because I think Williams is one of those kids that just seems like he's going to be able to hang on and, and survive another round, you know? Yeah. My, my bracket looks a lot different with the, the wrestle backs. I have different guys um, in there with, cause I, I have Murray getting through um i don't know if murray and williams have seen each other at all um but if murray's wrestling well i mean that could be a really good match in that uh third round Conti match so i have it a little bit different there and obviously with wilson down there um but that changes that i have wilson beating jaffe but um i think we have the, the the top four guys correct as always pretty much um 
So not really sure about this this lower lower half of the bracket. You guys think that it's pretty cut and clear on the wrestlebacks. I, I disagree. I think this wrestleback uh, looks a little different than Joe's bracket. I could be wrong, so I have to save my sheet here. But I did put it in pencil, Nate, so I can change my picks. <laughs> So as we move into 133, and according to reoccurring, Sheridan's name is there, I can assure you. Uh, if we look at this weight class, we have, uh, again, Gavin Sheridan is the, I think is head and shoulders but ever, above everyone else. And then I think there's the next level where like you got uh, Rosansky and Dennis in that level. And then there's another level where you get into some others like Ford, Strickland, Grant, um, and, and there, uh, you go below that, and then you have um, you know guys below that. So uh, as you can see, I've shared in winning it um, again with Mutarelli gone. This was this became Sheridan's weight class, and uh, you know he he is he does so many things so well um, uh, when wrestling. He's he's so tough on his feet. He's tough to score on. He's physical. He's tough on top. He's opportunistic. If you make mistakes, he's going to make you pay for it. And it's hard to keep him down. You know, he's by far the most physical wrestler in this weight class. Um, you know, and um, it's there's no re there's no surprise why he's the heavy favorite to win it. Yeah, a little uh, a little trivia with Sheridan. He's got a shot to become the second kid from Boyertown to be a four time uh, state qualifier. Either of you guys know the other one? Jordan Wood. Nope. Jordan Wood was not a state qualifier senior year. Oh, that's right. Uh, let's see. Who would that be? Alec Pelicotti? Nope. Uh, one of the little guys. <laughs> he might have been a twin. Oh, uh, Jacob Campbell. Yep, there you go. There you so go. it's kind of surprising, though, just, uh, you know, the, the long history of Boyertown that only one guy has made it to states four times. Obviously, Gavin has a, a really, really good shot to do that here. I agree with, uh, I think, yeah, I agree fully with your bracket. Um, you know, it's interesting to see, you know, we talked a little bit, Avangrid was a topic on the, on the forum this year with the, with their schedule and district duels and this and that, but Christian Ford, obviously having his best season 33 and one, uh, I don't think he, he matches up well with Sheridan, but I do think, uh, he's going to be right there in the mix and, you know, he can make it to semis. That's, that's a, it's a big step. Um, obviously just for him having a little bit more expectations this year with that record and being a senior, I think he has to make it to semis. And if he doesn't, it, it's going to be a really wrong, long road back. So I think he's in position to obviously he beat Richmond last week. So I think Ford gets there. And then, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much horsepower Dennis has in the finals against Sheridan, obviously a very skilled wrestler, but you know, Sheridan is so physical and fast and that'll be a, an interesting matchup. Yeah, I have it pretty much the same way. Obviously, I have Stahl beating Whitaker. I mean, that's just the way it is because he's hot. Um, oh, W. Yeah, I mean, he, he he beat the one, two, and three seeds. I mean, that, that rarely is done in any tournament, um, and he comes in hot. I mean, I know Whitaker um, has some, some good Glenn, experience. Glenn, he did it in the South. He did What's it in the that? South. He, did, he beat the one, two, and three in the South, not the East. Uh, that's okay. So let's just talk a little bit about the Dennis Rosansky match. I mean, I have it the same way. Obviously, I have Sheridan, Ford, Dennis, and Rosansky. Dennis beating Rosansky, Sheridan uh, beating Ford, and Sheridan winning. I mean, Sheridan's in a class of his own here in the in in southeastern region. Uh, he's just a machine. Um, very very sound fundamentally, tough to score upon, and he is tough as nails. So th there is a little bit of a drop off. But I am interested in the Rosansky Dennis match. Rosansky comes in with a lot of experience. Um, you know, not only at regionals, but he's been in the States and, uh, that's, that's a great semifinal. I mean, we look at semifinals, um, and this is a weight class where this is a really, really good semifinal. So, um, I do have Dennis winning, but uh, that's one I circle to, to make sure I'm a Matt side for that one. Yeah. I mean, a one, nothing loss to Sheridan last week, obviously an impressive loss for Rosansky. Uh, yeah, he definitely makes you earn it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Rosansky, I, I don't know if he's going to score enough points uh, on Dennis. Um, you know, he's tough in a lot of positions and doesn't really, uh, you know, when those in those tough matches finds it uh, difficult to, to score points when necessary. So, um, you know, like I think, uh, you know, we can term him as a guy who doesn't really wow you, um, but wins those, grinds out those close matches. I think just Dennis is going to have uh, a little bit better in this situation. 
So let's look at these wrestle backs at, at 133 pounds. So um, I, I, I should be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Um, the McGran uh, Brant match uh, is a rematch from last week, which we saw a couple of them, or we're going to see a couple of them. Um, they'll go, they go back and forth in that, that particular um, uh, match, I think puts that the winner of that match puts them in position to make that five six match. Um, the winner of it, rather. So uh, with you see McGrand coming out of that, you know, first round consolation beating Hilton, beating Whitaker, um, and then you know coming up against Strickland from Sun Valley, and you know, Strickland just a little bit too much for him, <clears throat> which feeds in the Ford, which is like their third or fourth time wrestling this year. Ford until Strickland shows me otherwise, I, I'm going to go with Ford having the best of them there. <clears throat> Uh, Ford overcoming his schedule uh, to make it to states, um, and mm -hmm. then uh, you know looking at the bottom, uh, you know you have Brant and Richmond. That's a rematch from earlier in the year, which Brant won fifteen to four, and then Brant Rosansky, which is a rematch from last week. I'm going to go with Rosansky because and he's been here before. At all the points that you guys talked about earlier, he did beat Brant two nothing at, at districts, and then Brant Strickland. I just think Strickland uh, has uh, the experience factor on Brant. Maybe he might be just a year away uh, after enjoying a great junior season, making that jump uh, just comes up a little bit short. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, go, go ahead, Nate. I, I, uh, yeah, I agree uh, with your third and fourth right there. I think Ford having to wrestle Strickland again, it's a tough break for both those guys. Uh, you know, just uh, they know each other really well from from cracking and all that, and it's just a yeah, it's tough to beat a guy that many times in the same year. And, and Strickland obviously had, having the revenge factor that's uh, it's tough tough either way. I think uh, I think Marcy's a guy to to kind of keep an eye on down there, just with the the teammates he has to practice with. Um, and you know, I know Richmond has some some tough losses this year, but he's also the kind of guy that can just uh, you know go up five nothing against anybody. Oh, well, not anybody, but you know what I mean. Uh, he, he's uh, very good upper body stuff, and he, he, he he's not afraid to, to take some shots and try to launch some guys. So I think, you know, Richmond keep himself in the mix, but I think Marcy, you know, might be there in the Conci final or Conci semifinal, and I think I have Strickland beating Marcy for fifth place there. So, uh, but pretty close to the same. Yeah, my my bracket looks a little different um, in the down there for fifth place, but certainly Ford and Rosansky going for third place. I have Rosansky winning there, but. I mean that McGran Brandt match for me. I have, I have McGran winning up top there, um, and the stall. So that changes things for me. Um, and I have Strickland against Richmond for that fifth place match. So it looks a little bit different for me. Um, I think it, it 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 could come down to somebody who gets hot in the wrestlebacks and somebody that packs it in, uh, dropping down with a bad loss somewhere. So um, I I have Richmond over Strickland. I, I don't know why. Uh, but I do because I don't have Richmond wrestling Brand. I have uh, Marcy wrestling Richmond and Richmond beating Marcy. So my bracket down below looks totally different. That's usually the case for me, as you know. But I, I might be right on this one. I don't. I don't see Brand going for fifth place. E e either way, if he wins or loses that first one. All right, gang. We're back. We're gonna start. We're back with one thirty-nine. Uh, you know the storm's going on. I lost power for a second and uh, just turned everything off. So. We're jumping back in. I'm gonna start sharing. We're gonna go right to 139, uh, where this weight class is gonna. Our weight class is gonna be a lot of fun. And I, you know, we just talked a little bit off camera when we got back on the call that we think uh, we're gonna have a lot of different opinions on how this um, uh, bracket falls. Um, again, I I will go with Pat Kelly from CB West winning this one. Um, but there's so many ways to go. You got uh, probably five guys that could five different guys could win this, win this weight class. Apparently get hot between Blake Boyer, Pat Kelly, Johnny O'Brien. Uh, don't can't throw out Luke Knox, uh, even Jake Neal. Uh, so maybe we go as far as six, um, you know, five, to, or five, to, five deep here. Um, and then you throw in other tough guys like AJ bot Hunter Delaney. Um, you know, Chris Nesbitt has been at regionals a couple times. And, and so it's just a, it's just a, a Beck Bab. Uh, it's just a weight class that is uh, has a lot of uh, a lot of solid wrestlers uh, and no like no hammer like a Ziggler, like a Sheridan that we've seen already um, that is, uh, you know, odds on favor to win the mat to win the the, the weight class. Yeah, what do you guys think? This, this weight class is crazy. This is the most wide open weight class of all District 1 in the southeastern region. Um, I have it a little bit different. 
Um, but again, this is it, it could change quickly because again, this is that um, O'Brien Kelly Neal trio coming out of the the East. Um, on any given night, uh, one of these guys can beat the other. But Neal has proven that once he beats you, uh, he can keep that thing going. And, and he did it with O'Brien. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to do it with Kelly here. Uh, and he's going to get into the finals against O'Brien and win. So I have Neal winning over O'Brien. Uh, but again, uh, that, that match is, is huge. Um, and, and don't forget, like you just said, uh, Nesbitt's a pinner. Um, he, he, he's powerful. Um, I don't think he's at the same level, uh, as some of these other guys in terms of the, the pure talent and, and wrestling ability, but Nesbitt, uh, he's explosive. He can pin, he's got a great cradle. Um, he's dangerous. So it, this is wide open, but I have Neil beating O'Brien and, and beating Kelly again in a rematch, uh, two rematches from, I mean, we're talking, these guys have gone at it in leagues. And they've gone at it at districts, and they've wrestled in the uh, regular season. So this is like the fourth time around already. Uh, and I got Neil uh, just with the experience uh, from getting states last year, winning the regional title. Yeah, I and I need anything to add? completely different there too. I uh, I actually on the top half I have Boyer beating O'Brien to make the finals. Uh, close first match in overtime, and then the second one was a seven-one win by O'Brien. So that kind of uh, maybe scares people away. I just think Boyer's been thinking about that one for a while now. I think he figures it out. Obviously, you know, being here last year and with that big, big pin against uh, Quinn Smith, he's he's been in the big spot before. Um, on the bottom half, I, I actually have Delaney beating Kelly to make the semifinals. Uh, they wrestled last year at regionals. It was nine three win by Delaney. Obviously, Kelly, you know, has gotten a lot better this year. Had a big uh, Escape the Rock tournament, so. Um, uh, you know, all of these, obviously I think they're, you know, not to, not to take a cop out, but I think these, all these semifinals and potential semifinal matchups are, I don't think there's any favorite in this match in this, in this bracket. So, uh, we could all look like idiots or one of us could look like a genius who knows, but I think Neil has been the most consistent, just, uh, you know, looking over his career, you know, wins over Coons over, uh, you know, some of these other guys, O'Brien just has a lot of tough wins to his name. So I think he's the, the most trustworthy kid in the bracket. So I'm going to go with him uh, for the, for the win. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there could be a lot of variation depending on who gets hot. And I think, yeah, like you said, Knox, I mean, you can't forget about him. I think he's, he probably has more facial hair than everybody else on this, on this bracket. <laughs> most of these kids aren't even shaving yet. And he, he's walking in like uh, you know, Grizzly Adams. So I think uh, maybe he, he might intimidate a couple of people that way just, just in itself, but no, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be. I think I think this quarterfinal round is probably the best bracket in terms of quarterfinal semis, and then maybe the finals is a, is a good one as well. Yeah, Joe, slide down because this is yeah. going to get really interesting now with your bracket. Right. Um. You know, looking at just those those first round guys, uh, Beck Bab losing a first round match, coming out being uh, I I have him making that Conti quarter, then losing Hunter Delaney. Uh, who gets Boyer in that Conti semis? Boyer beats him, and uh, Knox coming out uh, after drop the drop down, being Scheibel, beating Bot. Uh, you know, Knox and Neil. Neil beats Knox, Neil beats Boyer, and Knox beats Delaney to get out of um, the region, get the state to the freshman. Yeah, if you put Kelly in Neil's spot, I have the same way. So I have Kelly and Neil spot, and then I have Delaney Boyer, Boyer winning. I have uh, Kelly Knox, Kelly winning, Kelly beating Boyer, uh, and then I have Delaney and Knox, and I have Knox winning. So, uh, you know, Knox, there's a lot of talk about Knox out there, um, and I think he gets the states this year. I don't know if it's going to be here, but he, he definitely gets out. Yeah, uh, you know, again, you, the Neil and Kelly debate, uh, you flip a coin, you know what I mean? I think it's that close. I think it's going to be a tough, hard fun match. I'm just going with Kelly. Um, you know, just got feeling just, uh, you know, it's what just, again, uh, I was one of those, another one of those one the decisions I stewed over a little bit back and forth, but ultimately decided to go with Pat Kelly. What do you I got, got O'Brien right? taking third. I got O'Brien taking third over Delaney. And then I have uh, Kelly sneaking in over Knox for that last, that last spot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's six, six guys here that all deserve a, a, a trip to, to Hershey next week, and it's going to be Nate, uh, Nate with his Chessmont glasses on in this hey, class. I mean, listen, Glenn's not the only one allowed to have a little home cooking. <laughs> I got to stick up for my Westchester guys. 
Uh, you mean Sun Valley? Isn't oh, that Sun where you go to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought, I thought I, you know, I, then they moved to Sun Valley. Nate? Yeah, hey, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of Delaney wins at regionals. That's all I know. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with the track record of the family. I think we've got uh, six state qualifications from that family so far. So we're going to make it a seven on this one. Joe loves to stir the pot, doesn't he? Stir the pot, Joe. <laughs> get the rankings going. Get the ratings going. Let's go. No, there's there's plenty of stuff on the forum that that <laughs> I, I don't need to interject anymore. I uh, so not no one can go on there and speak logic. So, all right, let's move to forty five. Um, forty five is a weight class that's intriguing because there's no. Um, I would say like it's, it's kind of open, but it's not. Gavin Carroll's kind of separated himself from the from the pack. However, he. Uh, I know it says Tansini there for whatever reason. I tried saving it a second time, exporting it from the from the program I'm using. And Tansini just shows up on top of every bracket. I apologize for that. Uh, Max Tansini, you're lucky. You're getting a little bit extra publicity every bracket. Um, but with that said, Gavin Carroll's kind of set himself apart, but it's not um, it's not like an insurmountable distance he's put between himself and the likes of like Brill Hart and Langle, and you know you, you know for that matter, you know uh, you know Chris Staub at that. Um, so, you know, with that said, I think it's still Carol's weight class to lose. Um, but there's also some, like, definitely some haves and some have-nots in this weight class. Um, Cliver, I know he injury default in that third and fourth place match. If he's healthy, he wins the rematch with Elijah Brown. I don't know what the status of his health is. Uh, all things point that he's going to be a, a full go this weekend at the moment. I mean, it's only Wednesday, so that's always a subject to change. Maybe a, a late week scratch. Uh, you know, Brillhart and Quinn. Brillhart gets the best of Brady Quinn. Uh, Sam Fleece and Barry's probably the best match of this first round in this weight class. And again, it's one of those ones you want to keep an eye on. Sam Fleece, a big physical 45 pounder. Jordan Barry, uh, just very consistent, uh, very tough to score in a lot of positions. I think, uh, you know, Barry gets the best of them. Uh, Langle, uh, Gunnar Pedrick and Silva, I think, is also a somewhat intriguing matchup, but I'm really impressed with the, the senior season that Jamie Silva's put together, and uh, I think he ultimately wins. Uh, Stan Kina and then Staub over uh, Luke Senkow from, from Upper Darby. What do you guys have? Yeah, I want to hear Nate first about Langle. Yeah, I mean, this is a, I think if you were, if you had to bet winners here, right? Maybe I would put my money on Langle because I think Carroll's got a tougher road to the finals. I think having to wrestle Brillhart potentially in the semis, that's a tough, tough rematch for, for Gavin Carroll. Obviously, you know, he's ranked number four in the state, I believe. So uh, a lot of good wins to him, to his resume. And he's a, he's a football guy, I know. So he's got a, a toughness about him that you obviously trust in the big stage. Uh, Carroll Langle is three, two, the first time. So if they do match, match up again, you know, it's just all about that takedown. I think Langle could get it, but you know, that's a toy, that's a, a coin toss flip there, I think as well. But, um, yeah, I think Jordan Barry, I think he's the potential, you know, wild card in this one. I think he's, uh, you know, obviously a very athletic kid. He's very explosive from his feet, not as polished of a wrestler as Brillhart, but Brillhart's, uh, you know, he's, he's dealt with some injury stuff this year too. So, uh, we're not exactly sure where, where everybody is at that point, but I, I could see Barry, you know, making the constellation final and I could see him maybe not even making it out. So it'll be interesting to kind of keep an eye on him. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think, uh, you know, Carol and Brillhart, uh, meeting the semis and then, uh, Staub, obviously, uh, you know, I say Langle has an easier path than Carol does, but obviously Staub was right there last year, sixth place at regional. So that's not going to be a, a walk in the park either down low. Yeah. I, I, Thought the same thing when I looked at the bracket uh, that Staub uh, had an easier path, uh, obviously, than Carroll because I have Staub getting into the finals. Um, but, yeah, Lengel and Staub kind of have an easier path. I mean, Brillhart, Barry, uh, and if Cliver is healthy, um, that that upper half of the bracket is much more difficult. So depending on, uh, you know, what happens in those quarter, excuse me, those wrestlebacks will really determine – uh, some of those spots, but uh, Brillhart, like you said, um, he's had some injury stuff uh, throughout his career. Um, but right now, I mean, he he gave uh, you know everything he had last weekend. Had a great tournament. So if he keeps it going, um, he, he's kind of a wild card. But I, I do like Staub over Langle. I have not seen Langle. Um, I didn't get to see him at the Cold Cracker this year. Um, I just think Staub is battle tested. He's wrestled uh, a lot of. 
top ranked guys uh, all season long. I just feel that uh, this is his time missing his freshman year. Hasn't made it to the States. And when we talk about these stories, um, Staub is one of them. So uh, I have Staub getting into the final against Carroll. They've seen each other a bunch of times. I think uh, Car- Carroll's won all of them but one. I think Staub has one win on Carroll. So uh, it's an interesting weight class. I mean, Carroll, again, like you said, Joe, has put himself uh, in front. Um, and especially with the, the high ranking in, in PA power, um, if that's really the case, then Langle and Stahl should be right next to him. So I'm not really sure, um, you know, why that is, and Brillhart too. So let's slide down and see how ugly it gets down here with your guys' brackets. <laughs> uh, as we look here, uh, you know, again, there's not any guy that kind of knocks your socks off that was a first-round loser. Um, you know, got to keep an eye on Shane Stankina. Uh, you know, Boyertown guy, when he puts it together, it's pretty tough. I see him uh, making that fifth place match, ultimately losing to, to Jordan Berry. Um, you know, with Staub and Brillhart wrestling for third place, so I never filled it in. Uh, I got Brillhart beating Staub for third place. Um, but, you know, Silva right there in the mix. Silva, Silva and Stankina have, have um, you know, sh- I think split. I think they're two and two, or maybe it's three one in favor of Silva. But I think when it comes down to it, Stankina's been here before. I think he makes the. Uh, necessary adjustments to win that match. Uh, Silva's biggest feather in his cap. He's pretty physical, and uh, you know his style clash with Stankina. But I think Stankina finds a way to get it done. But uh, then it comes up short, making it to states. Yeah, I I find that um, that it, that Silva Stankina match is kind of key because um, I I had Silva winning there, but uh, I also you know I don't know like you know with Quinn. Uh, and Silva and Silva and Stink, I, I just kind of that, that's one of those things they've wrestled a lot uh, against each other. So my bracket looks a little bit different. I got Silva uh, against Stankina, Silva winning again against Brillhart. So I have Brillhart there. And of course, I have Langle dropping down against Cliver and Langle winning there. And then uh, Cliver uh, dropping down against Silva. And I have uh, I, I wasn't sure, you know, if if Cliver is healthy. Uh, he's the he's the guy getting out in the fifth spot with my my bracket. But uh, like I said, this thing, um, you know, gets messy down here. I mean, you're the guys that are dropping down uh, out of the semis uh, have a little bit of an easier path. Um, you know, they don't necessarily have to win, you know, two really difficult matches. So uh, th- these wrestlebacks here, this is going to be a weight class to watch with the wrestlebacks. So I'd say there's four or five guys here that we're, we, we might just be overlooking. Yeah, and to your point about Cliver, I don't know how healthy he is, and yeah. that coupled that with the fact he hasn't wrestled a lot this year, I think that comes into play because you know there's there's gonna be no easy matches here. So I think Finnis comes into play, and again, if he's not 100 percent healthy, it's gonna catch up to him. But again, if healthy, like I think every bit I agree every bit with what you said about his ability to to get out. I just don't know where his health lies right now with that uh, seeing that medical forfeit uh, in that third place match last week. Yeah, Quinn's got a chance to do the uh, the pack pack redemption short tour going yep. against San Felice Silva and then Stankina if he wins all the way through. That'd be a be an interesting little run just for. Uh, side it would note. be interesting. Uh, feet. Um, he's he's closed the gap every time he's wrestled Stankina. Silva presents problems with him as I uh, you know mentioned before his physicality. Um, but like you know Quinn had a, a big one over San Felice in the third place match last week. Um, and. You know, again, at regionals, you throw all that stuff out the window. I think, it, you know, that match, Quinn and Silva happens again. I I can see it going either way. But uh, until I see, you know, Quinn win that match, I, I'm not picking against Silva. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I think Barry is just the ultimate wild card. I think he could – I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he took third. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily predict that, but I think he's got the skill to do that. Um, but he could also, you know, uh, you know, take a take a tough loss and just not react well and not make it out at all. So I think, uh, you know, whatever his mindset is, if he's if he's got the right mind, I think he's I think he gets out this year. Uh, obviously, his last go downtown, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of parity down low. Yeah, I, I think whoever's hot uh, coming in here, like getting that that you know big win over somebody is going to be the guy that kind of wrecked the bracket down here like someone's going to get, have to get hot um so like i said if, if you get into the semifinals here you're in a good spot and the wrestlebacks is up for grabs are we closing the book on one 145 here oh yeah 
Hey, Glenn, if your predictions come true, when's the last time Hapro had two regional finalists? Mm, I don't even know. It's been a long time. Was Harkins a, um, let me just off the top of my head. Um, yeah, just Harkins was in there by himself. I don't, yeah, I don't but but he was the, he was a freshman when he was a freshman when Gribshaw was a senior though, right? Um, yeah, we had tours. Yeah, I, it's it's been a while. I'd have to look that one up. What about those big boys? Were they together or not? Yeah, we had I guess not, right? guys in there. Not too. I'd have to look at that. Yeah, I you know I just that that popped off. I mean, when you said regional finalists, and I'm all in on on the you know I, I think that the it's more of reality not to you know rehatch 107 i think uh morrison's chances of making there are better than stobbs stobbs gonna be in the mix I, he's getting out in my opinion as long as he shows up and makes weight i think stob gets out um regional final uh would be would be a icing on the cake for his senior year yeah i agree not another question just uh you know we just see it differently so we close the book on 145 we go to 152 and uh, we have another weight class where we – one of these weight classes where we have a guy that just kind of separated himself from the rest of the pack. Um, and there's just levels to it. And, you know, he, he's – I see him with a rematch of Coons, who I believe he tech fall in the finals of districts last week. Um, you know, and Coons is a great wrestler, and Coons can find himself on the podium, but there's just a level that calling guys on that he's not at this moment. So uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of uh, my bracket you see. Um you know, you look down this bracket and there's some interesting first round matchups. Um, you know, the, the Bukowski Harrington matchup uh could be you know uh an interesting one. Um and yeah, I love uh, the I love the Dikey uh Bliss match too. I mean Yeah, um I mean, there's I, just like some intrigue to it because yeah, I think just like guys here that, that seem like you know Harrington, uh Borkowski, did you say that to say that? I, I mean, did. Yeah, I mean, you know, Harrington, like, you know, if, if he shows up, he, yeah, I feel he's like he was unbelievable. Awesome last when when he happened. doesn't show up, you know, it, yeah, you know, the fourth fourth guy coming out of the south, he just didn't show up. It was but, it was I a mean, head scratcher. The same thing with Bliss. Yeah. Like Bliss, I didn't think he would be a fourth place yeah. guy in 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 the West. Um, so again, like you have some of those uh those matchups. I think uh you know Rutman beats Jewel, Borkowski beats Harrington, Nafshi. Um, you know, as the four seed, um, although it's in allegedly in dispute, um, uh, wins his first round matchup of Drew Dotter. Uh, again, I always struggle saying this. I, be, I believe it's pronounced by Ishkabov from uh, the Chamonix, enjoying a great junior season. Uh, Roman Seaman having a great tournament last week and winning the West. Daiki and Coons. Uh, you see my semifinals. I go Coons by Ishkabov, uh, Nafshi and Guy. And then with Coons and Guy in a rematch. Yeah, I I might bracket the same way. You can just call him Beck. It's a lot easier. <laughs> okay. There's, there, hey, there's, only one, there's only one Beck in District 1, and it's not it's not him. <laughs> yeah, you guys were talking about, you know, Bliss taking fourth and, and a potential upset. He's the kind of guy that you just got to keep an eye on. Same with Seaman. Guys that are, are really good at a, a certain thing, like the, the cradle. Bliss is just really good on top I think he's got 70 pins out of his 96 career wins. So uh, you know, those are the kind of guys that can scare you just in, in some of these tight matches. If they if they just you know lock up one cradle, it could be over. But uh, I got a little more trivia if you guys are up for it. Oh, Definitely. yeah. All right, so Colin Guy has lost to only one District 1 wrestler in his career. Name that wrestler. Uh, back. Nope. Hmm. Currently wrestling or already graduated? He's already graduated. So it means he had, it was, it was what, his freshman year. What conference? Uh, it happens to be the Chesma, Chesma, the League of Champions. Mm. Let's see, freshman year. He wrestles that in the one. city of Philadelphia. That's your final clue. He wrestles in Philadelphia right now. Ooh. Ooh. Doug Zaff? No, that can be Doug Zaff. Um, who am Same I thinking? Team. Um, the rest of the Penner Drexel. <laughs> yeah, the says, latter. Oh, no, yeah. What's that? Come on, Joe. Know your trivia. Dom D. No, 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 never mind. Same school as Doug Zaff. Same school as Doug Zaff. Why am I drawing a blank? 
What weight class two. was he at? At 38? I'll just tell you guys because it's going a little far, but Dom Fendora was the only one to beat him. Oh, beat yeah. Him as a freshman. Yeah. Wow. 38 pound, I think they were. So yep, just a little interesting tidbit. So, I mean, not that you needed any uh, extra um, any extra reason to pick Colin Guy for this tournament. He's obviously you know, one of the best in the country. But, uh, yeah, he hasn't lost to a District 1 foe in, in over two years. So I think it's a, a pretty safe bet. Yeah, it gets interesting down low, Joe. Though, so we all have the we yeah. all have the same bracket. You have Seaman and Dikey too, uh, Nate. You have the same bracket. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you trust the Boyertown kid there. Yep. So uh, we look here, and and I have uh, you know Dikey uh, being Jewel um, coming out being Seaman being Nafshi, um, and then ultimately losing the Coons for third place. And uh, you know, you get um, a Borkowski Rutman match. I got Borkowski winning. I like his uh, his body of work up to this point and put himself in that fifth place match uh, as a senior. And then uh, losing an offshoot for what seems like the, the, the <coughs> eighth, eighth time this year that they've wrestled. And again, I can't pick against the finals until, here. What's yeah, that? You, you, you have the, you have Coons in the wrong spot. Oh, my uh, yeah. my apologies. That should have been. Oh, uh, sorry. That should have been by Eshkabov. My fault. Um, yeah, I double check these two. Uh, my apologies. I'm gonna get ripped for it. Uh, I have uh, by Eshkabov beating uh, Daiki for third place. Yeah, I've I've a little bit different. I I do have it all the way out the same way you do with Daiki Seaman and Borkowski. And well, I don't. I have Bliss. This is where I have Bliss beating Rutman, and that's like you know that one match or two that I see down here that could change things. Um, same thing with the Harrington Seaman match. I don't really know, but I do have Seaman Dyke. I got Seaman winning against uh, Dyke there because if, he, if he's winning, you know, there he, he's hot. Uh, but I have Nafshi coming down and, and winning there uh, going against uh, Beck uh, or third place. And I have Beck winning that one. And then I have Borkowski actually beating Seaman to get out. So it's, you know, it, it looks a little different, um, but again, I, I'm I'm very interested to see uh, the wrestlebacks here. There's not a lot of times that you look at the wrestlebacks as being, you know, way more exciting than those you know, semifinals, some of those quarterfinal matches. But this is a weight class where uh, there's going to be some battles down here, and that, this is a wide open class after Coons and Guy, uh, in, in my mind. Agreed. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think Nafshi, you know, you see Harriton, even last year, he kind of came out of nowhere. I know he had a decent freshman year. Last year, you're like, who's this kid? You know, he, all the way to the Constellation final. Uh, you know, but he's he's a big body. I think he's going to present some some matchup problems down there. I do think he can make the third place uh, match again this year. Um, you know, I think Beck maybe has the advantage there. And then for fifth place, you know, it comes down between Borkowski and uh, Dyke, and I think, you know, Jacob Rutman's in the mix there from Coatesville. Um, you know, going into last week, I thought Rutman was a, a pretty good pick to, to make it out. Uh, he ends up getting cradled and pinned by Seaman in the in the West sectional final. So I don't know if that uh, you know I don't know how he bounces back from that. I think he's a he's a real a real talent on his feet, but I'm not sure if he's he's good enough on the mat to to get through here. But I think he's somebody to keep an eye on also. also. All right, guys, let's, let's head to 160. we got a couple more to go. So we have Gavin Cole. And, again, uh, this is a weight class where I think Gavin Cole has distanced himself and be the class of this uh, this particular weight class. Uh, he's he's taken on all comers from uh, District 1 and, and has uh, has been uh, – has asserted his dominance here. Um, but there's a lot of lot of lot of uh, four other spots that a lot of guys are going to be wrestling for, and so um, you know you see I have um, you know we work back from the first round uh, Cole uh, Jackson Keen again in that 160 pound weight class pretty tough Jackson Keen ends up being the fourth place guy uh, you know Jackson Keen went in over Joel Jones um, the other Bayeshkabov brother um, uh, Erzn Ernazar. Uh, winning, uh, Maddie Shoemaker from Methacton getting a win in the first round over uh, Gavin Natalini. Uh, it's nice to see Springfield Delco have a few regional qualifiers this year. Uh, they have several, and um, you know we got uh, Arthur Gordon. I got JD Heiser upsetting him. When JD Heiser's on, he's he's pretty tough. 
Um, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to the boy town kid, uh, wrestling a more or significantly tougher schedule and having, uh, those 13 losses were losses that, you know, against a lot of, a lot of tough kids. I mean, he had some slip ups against some kids should have beat, but overall, uh, you know, Heiser's a tough kid that earned that spot over returning regional qualifier, uh, in that boy town lineup. Uh, then we have John Smith, the phenom freshman phenom from Oxford, uh, winning there. Uh, Michael Pepe beating Paxton Hunt and uh, Ryan Gallagher knocking off Will Cadden. My semifinals are Smith versus Gallagher and Cole and Bayeshkabov. And then I got Cole and I got I got um, John Smith in the uh, in the final against them as a freshman. That probably makes Nate happy. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> hometown Nate. hometown hero there uh, certainly could happen. The bottom half of the bracket just. Uh, for a fence there like myself, it's kind of torture. Um, I really like Ryan Gallagher as a wrestler. You know, you, you think back last year, that first night, you know, he goes out there and he shuts out Barlow, you know, probably one of the bigger upsets of the of the first night. And then he comes back and, you know, he just misses State's uh, taking six, you know. Um, I think Gallagher could be in the finals, and I think Gallagher has a shot to get upset by Pepe, potentially. I, I think Gallagher is the favorite there, but – you know, Pepe's a senior, been been a lot of tough matches. And then, you know, if we do get Gallagher or Smith, it's just a matter of uh, inexperience against experience. I think, uh, you know, Smith may be a little bit more talented, you know, at least at least at that age. But I think Gallagher may be a little bit more seasoned and, and maybe that puts, puts him over the edge. But that's that's uh, this is one of the tougher semifinal matches for me to, to pick just because I've seen Smith a few times. He's definitely not. It doesn't appear afraid at the moment. Uh, he's really good, you know, on his feet, getting a couple of takedowns. And if you can get a takedown or two at this level, uh, it just makes things so much easier for you. So uh, that's a tough one right there. I do think Cole, you can pencil him in the finals and down low. I, I, that's one of the more intriguing semifinals just from a, a you know, a style standpoint. Yeah, I, I agree. I have, I have Cole and um, Ernest R there. And I have Smith and Gallagher. And again, that this is the, the one that kind of decides the, the bracket down below. Um, I have Gallagher edging Smith. Uh, again, contrast to Styles. Gallagher's hungry, uh, missing out last year. So again, you look at those stories. I, I think that if he gets a chance to punch his ticket here, he's going to get it done. So that, that's a, a difference there for me. Um, I, you guys have not seen Gordon probably at all. Uh, Gordon is a horse. Um, he's impressive. He's powerful. He's he's very agile and and very technically sound. Um, so Gordon, to me, um, it, it changes the bracket a little bit. But you know, we'll, we'll see down below what it looks like and see how far you have Gordon going. And that'll tell me where I'm at. No, uh, yep, yep. You got him right where I thought you did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, if we go there, I think Shoemaker is has a, a better body of work this year uh, than knox off Gordon. Uh, again, Jackson Keene and Shoemaker in a Conti quarterfinal is going to be an absolute battle. Um, you know, Heiser and Pepe would be a good match. I think the Pepe, the senior, is going to be too much for him in that situation. Uh, you know, Pepe beaten by Eshkabov to get into that Conti semifinal with Gall losing Gallagher. Again, punches his ticket there. Uh, and then... Um, um, Sorry, uh, Baish Kabav beating Shoemaker for fifth place to go to states. Yeah, my my difference is I have Hunt beating Pepe out of the gate, so my, my bracket looks totally different. Um, but I do have uh, Baish Kabav uh, against Smith for third, um, and I have Smith winning that match. Uh, down below for fifth place, I have Pepe getting out, um, winning over. I'm not sure because I had to change my bracket. Gordon. Gotcha. Yeah, hey, just, uh, got? Tough sled, and I think uh, you know all this stuff makes sense. It's just you know interesting bracket. There's only one one freshman in the bracket, and yet there's only one kid that's been to states, which is you know you see all these guys that have been been here a few times and have a lot of a lot of experience, but you know, only Cole has been to been wrestled wrestled in Hershey uh, out of this whole bracket. So. Yeah, I think of all, I mean, this is a, a crapshoot down here, down low. I think Pepe, I hope Pepe gets out for his sake. He's been, uh, you know, he cut cut to 60 in the postseason. Um, it's going to be a tough matchup against uh, Baish Kabov. And uh, I think Shoemaker, I think it might end up being uh, Shoemaker and Pepe for that, that final spot. And we'll see, uh, yeah, we'll see who, who pulls that one out. 
Yeah, right. this, this, is, this one's interesting. This is, this is a good weight class for us. I mean, I, I have Cole kind of a little bit above everybody else, but I, I see a lot of guys here at the same level. And you, you bring up a good point, Nate. Like, you know, these guys want to get to Hershey. Um, some of these guys have not had this type of opportunity like a Gordon. Um, so it, it's interesting. He's only a junior. So it's kind of time to make his mark. So I, that's why I keep an eye on that kid. All right, let's turn to page 172. One of our uh, weight classes that has uh, like two guys that just, again, separate themselves from the pack. And uh, this is one where I'll get accused of many things. Um, but as you can see, I have a Saturday. Saturday night and Gotro are on a collision course. I have Sam winning this time after seeing him wrestle in a dual meet and three one win. Um, you know, it, that match could have gone either way. Uh, if you did see it, uh, Sam was in deep on his shot and a tied one one match. And Saturday night just was able to ward it off and uh, use some counter offense and, and score. Um, you know, I think if that's the situation again, I think, uh, you know, Gotro will be more savvy in that, in that position. If it comes down to a, a you know, a tie match late, late in, um, that he would finish it differently. Uh, just my, you know, my gut feeling. I went with my gut on this one, not, uh, necessarily, um, what, what, uh, what, maybe what I would go with <laughs> other, other situations. But if I can pick this one, if, if Glenn's point stop in regional finals, I can make Sam Gotro. Uh, without a much stretch to uh, yeah, uh, I mean yeah, yeah. it should be noted here that you know Beck Beck may be battling a little injury here, um, so you know I, I have Beck get getting through as the champ, um, but this will be a good one. But I don't even have Gutro wrestling Beck in the finals. I have Hogan. Oh, you're um, one of Hogan, those guys. Yeah, Ho well Hogan has been battling Beck, um, uh, uh, like day in and day out since the start of the season. Um, they've wrestled each other. I don't know how many times I know they saw each other at Cumberland Valley. Um, you know, it, 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 they saw each other at the district dual finals. Um, I, I just think that uh, Hogan, uh, you know, wants to prove that, you know, at least he he's the second best guy here in district one. So the, the Gutra Hogan match is going to be huge. That's probably one of the best semifinals we're going to see uh, all weekend. Um, but I do have the other, I have uh, Beck and, and Carr up top, obviously with with Beck winning. Yeah, I think if uh, you know, I don't know if they they pick a, a final to start with and end with, but I think if they would, this would be the the feature final of the night. Um, you know, Beck obviously had that that close win early, and he's. I mean, they're both just so seasoned. You can't you can't say uh, you can't choose one without you know. You choose one, and you're not disrespecting the other. They're both they're both elite talents. I think uh, two of the best in District One. Um, I lean Beck just for uh, yeah. I just lean that way. I guess my gut, which is a lot bigger than yours, Joe, says Beck. Um, but um, yeah, and then if he does that, he would be the uh, you know be the one more last piece of trivia for you guys. All right, Cruz <laughs> wins. Uh, if he wins this one, it'll be he'll be uh, the second three time regional champ for south can you name the other one? Oh, it's got to be a rapper right i mean it'd be a fair guess and i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with matt rappo i'm gonna no, go billy rappo billy, uh, the, billy rappo yeah no the, no the the youngest rappo i'm going with who is that billy is it billy yeah billy you were right, right the first time it was matt. it was matt Oh, yeah, my first guess. <laughs> the only one that didn't win a state title, but he won three regional championships. Yeah, I know it's like crazy. That. So he's got that. But yeah, but yeah, I think uh, I mean this is the highlight. This is the feature final of the night. If we get it, obviously, if Hogan makes it there, it's no, uh, it's not really a drop off either. Um, but yeah, it should be fun. And obviously, you know, Brandon Carr doesn't get talked about in that group. I don't think he's at that level, but this is obviously a, you know, if he pulls something he, off in the semis, that would just certainly get some attention to him. Brandon Carr is the next best guy after those three we talked about. And, and I think it's pretty yeah. clear he's the next best guy. Uh, ahead, of, ahead of Hogan? No, be, behind those three, I said. Oh, he's yeah, the next yeah, best yeah, guy yeah, after no, those three. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I just see it different. Like I said, I, I don't really know that much about Gutro. I, I know he doesn't get the same publicity that, that Beck does. I know we talked about that earlier in the season, Joe. Um, but I, I just think Hogan's kind of really seasoned. Uh, 
you know, he's got those, he, I think he went five and oh out at the state duels and, you know, he beat some good kids and I just think he's ready. Uh, this might be his time. So it's going to be a good one. Like I said, for me, that's a semifinal that I circled, uh, you know, as soon as I saw the brackets come out, that that's, that's a big one. Agreed. So let's go ahead and see how the, the back backside works. And again, um, you know, another time Chase Pollard, maybe if he had more time this year, he'd been out with what we can only assume as an injury as he's returning state, I'm not saying, I'm sorry, regional qualifier, um, you know, probably, uh, or was, was expecting more of his senior season. Um, but I think he loses to Bruette in that, um, second round consolations. Um, and then, you know, Jack Weldon will be in the mix there. Um, I think he's just a little bit better than Tommy Rush from Springfield Delco. Weldon and Carr, uh, you know, they've wrestled before. Carr wins again. Hogan beats Bradley. And uh, I got Hogan beating Carr for third place. And uh, Bradley beat Weldon for, for fifth. Well, I'll make mine quick because, obviously, if Gutro comes down, uh, he's the man over Carr. And I have Bradley getting out in the fifth spot. Yeah, I just think uh, I, I think it's almost guaranteed those top four are making it out. It just seems like... You, you, you just can't find anybody that could could knock one of those guys off. Uh, then the fifth spot is, the, you know, the most intriguing part. Obviously, the finals are intriguing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could throw five names up there. I think Weldon and Bradley, like you have there, I think they, they battle it out for fifth. Maybe Bradley a little bit more experienced, a little bit more tested. But, um, yeah, Weldon, you know, Weldon should, should be, maybe be able to make his way there to that, to, to that match at least. All right, ready to get to the, the final three and, and the you know the big big boys. Let's move. Uh, 189 by far. Uh, we talked about wide open weight classes. I mean, this one you have. We don't have um, what we talk about like top end talent, but we got a lot of just solid, tough, tough kids. You know, not maybe necessarily the best wrestlers, but just tough kids that are athletic and can can just cause you problems. So. Um, I think this one goes uh, by way of uh, Ben Primich from Pensbury. I've been impressed with his season up to this point, but like you just look at like the, you know, you got Carter Uecker returning state qualifier. Dylan Kiesling has only two losses on the year. Primich only has two losses on the year. Mason Richards was here a year ago. Freshman, um, you know, we haven't even talked about, we're going to talk about Franco Latore, freshman from Interboro, who has got uh, some very impressive wins on his schedule. Cole Lester just seems like he's been around forever. And, uh, you know, Spielman down at the bottom, the, the two seed. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it's just so many guys. I think Spielman come into it like uh, midseason was his weight class. I think Primich just kind of uh, maybe edged him a little bit in my book. That's why I'm going with him over Spielman in the final. Uh, but I have Primich, Euchre, Richards, and Spielman in the semis. Yeah. How do you guys see it? I, I got I to gotta agree with that. My bracket's the same way, Joe. Um, th this is some going to be some hard nosed wrestling here. These guys are all tough, big, solid wrestlers. Um, you're going to see a lot of banging out there uh, at 189. I have pretty much uh, beating Spielman. Uh, Spielman looked really good uh, this past weekend, um, and he'll give Primich everything he has. But I think Primich kind of is the man to beat here. Um, but you know, listen, Richards could get hot. Euchre could get hot. So. You know, down below is crazy. You know, you got you got Rowe and you got Richard, you got Euchre, you got Vitelli. I mean, down below is crazy. All right. Yeah, uh, I, how do you see it? This, uh, I just think this is the toughest one for me because I, I have not seen a lot of these guys. I mean, Primich, you know, he was 19 and 14 his first three years, and now he's 27 and 2. Just, uh, you know, I don't know if he's a late bloomer or just, you know uh, – uh, I don't know exactly what what his background is. Obviously, he's he's had a great year. Um, I just I, I have Euchre beating him just because of the uh, the experience factor being in that spot and, and making it last year. Um, but that, like I said, that's uh, that's some naivety on my part because I have not seen him and I don't exactly know his backstory. I think that that should be a good one. And then uh, yeah, I think you know obviously Richards down low against Spielman. Um, that should be another good one. I mean those spring guys they just. I don't know. It's hard to bet against them. I think uh, Richards maybe finds a way to to eke that one out, and we get an all pack all pack final for my O and J brethren. Yeah, and you know you you 
like I said, we're gonna we're gonna get in this bottom of the back side of this bracket, and it, it's gonna be again just a lot of just battles. Um, we look here, and you know, you look at uh, Ryan Rowe. Um, I was impressed with him all the way back to him in eighth grade. Kind of has, um, you know, had the, the maybe the success that that he that, that he was trending towards, but. Um, from what I've seen as of late, he's starting to like blossom a little bit and and maybe reach that potential. So you see, I'm in mean, that first round consolation wrestle back. You know, beat Paladino, beat Dyson Neal, beat Dylan Kiesling, and then lose to uh, Mason Richards, uh, and then just come up short to Franco Latore uh, from Interboro. Uh, Interboro again a, a state qualifier out of it. Um, you know, only a few regional qualifiers, but this kid for a freshman is is going to be dynamite. Yeah, I Go think ahead, uh, have your our third and our consolation final, regular final, or switch switch. But yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think Latore is uh, you know it's it's so hard to judge how these freshmen are going to respond in in a tournament like this. So many times you see the freshmen hit that wall, and they take that first loss on Friday night or Saturday morning, and it's just all about how they bounce back. Uh, I've, I've yet to see him, but I think he you know judging by his results, he, he's going to be right there in the mix, and I. I like the pick of Roe. I think obviously missing a lot of time, but you know, being being here last year and being a football guy, just having that toughness, I think he, he finds a way to survive and, and have a shot for Hershey. Yeah, I have a just a little bit different. I'm not a hundred percent sure of some of these other guys. Like I haven't really seen Vitali. Um I have uh, got to see Krobeski uh wrestle uh when they wrestled in district duels. Uh he wrestled really well. Um, so like there, there's a couple wild cards down here in that, that bracket with Latore. Um, and I did get to see him wrestle. He's really solid. Um, but I, I don't know if he can get out, um, with these big boys that, that are older. I mean, I just think that the, the older guys, uh, with a little more experience, get it done here. I have the Uker getting out as in the third place spot over Richard, just like Joe has it. Uh, and I have Brian Rowe taking fifth place. So um, it, it's it's a battle down here. I mean, it, you know, if, if Kessling beats Rowe, it changes the whole thing. Um, so th th there's some da danger down below, as they say. This this one's wide open uh, down down below. Yeah. Yeah. And I think last week, Vitelli, you know, may just drop to 89. He had a pretty good year, a 215. Got upset last week and, you know, obviously put himself in a bad spot, you know, as coming out of the third seed from the West. You know, I would have liked to see him, you know, if he was a sectional champ, just kind of see where he would line up. But he's got a really tough road to even, you know, win a match or two. So, yeah, um, I, I, I had him get oh, no. through to that fifth place match um, just based on his experience. But like I said, it, it's wide open down there. That that top half uh, is a barn burner of the Concies. Yep. All right. Well, as we get to the final two. Speaking of non barn burners, two fifteen. Yes. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be honest. This one, was, <laughs> this one was tough beyond beyond Dylan Bechtold. Like, uh, if we're if we're really being honest, you know, obviously the the Dylan Bechtold, uh, you know, heads and shoulders uh, is the class of this weight class, and that's no disrespect to anyone and in, 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 uh, any other wrestler of the fifteen other guys. Um, but like, decide, finding the next four guys. There's a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent in this weight class too. Our upper weights are are pretty talented, pretty evenly matched. Now it doesn't have the top end talent that heavyweight has, and it's funny that that's where we're ending with because next to 107, that's our that's our deepest weight class. But um, you know, Troy Mack getting upset last week. I got Beck told and Mack in the semis, and then Felix Mason, who's till otherwise shows me he's wrestling well, making the semis and beating Reagan McCulloch to get there. Yeah, I, I, I have the did? same. I have the same, but I have McCulloch. Edging Mason there, uh, I I don't know if it's just a SOL thing for me. Um, I just think McCullough's kind of been silent all year. No one's really paying attention to him. Um, but he he's he only has three losses. Um, you know he he's got some he's got a great workout partner in Joe Collins. Um, so I just think that uh, McCullough gets by Mason here. Um, and I think, you know, we might see Mac and Mason rematch down below, and I got Mac winning that for third. So that's just the way I played that out. I, I mean, that's kind of what I want to see uh, is Mac and Mason again. So maybe that's why I picked it. I don't know. So what do you got? What do you got, Nate? I think uh, I think the best two wrestlers in the in the bracket are Bechtold and Mac. And after last week, you know, Mac getting, 
getting upset and getting pinned by Mason puts them on the same side of the bracket. It's a tough break, uh, you know, for Mac and, and for some other guys on that side of the bracket as well. But, uh, yeah, obviously Dylan Bechtel just, uh, I mean, no disrespect to anybody else, but he, he should win this one, uh, you know, relatively easily. I think on the bottom half, you know, Mason, like you said, he, he did, uh, you know, he pinned Mac on a, a great match in the finals, but, uh, you know, he's got a, a 30 second pin loss to Prince already this season. I don't exactly know what happened in that match, uh, but maybe he caught him, but I think that's going to be a tough go just right off the bat. Um, Mason, really good football player, not a full-time wrestler. I think he's got a shot, you know, obviously to, to make the semifinals and, uh, but I, I, I'm going with McCullough to come out of the bottom there and then and to, to come second place to, to Bechtel there. I just, I'm not 100% sure, you know, how Mason's going to respond after last week, and I'm not sure if he's seasoned enough to, to do that in his first trip to regionals as a senior. Uh, I'd say, too, like, you know, uh, you know I'm going to give Glenn's uh, guy some praise. Like, uh, I had Alameda Guzman in my early preseason rankings, and then, like, I'm sure Glenn can shed light to why he's only wrestled 12 matches at this point. Um, you know, finished second in the South. Uh, but like, you know, he, he could possibly make some noise, but I think the whole um, conditioning factor becomes a problem for him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's got a tough draw too with Mac. Uh, well, I just mean in I mean, general, he could, he can make some noise in the backside. Yeah, he, I think he will. Um, you know, I didn't even mention, Bechtold, I mean, clearly, you know, he's the number one guy in the state here, uh, undefeated, um, clearly the number one in the state of Pennsylvania. So everyone else is bad on, you know, for second place. And again, no disrespect to the, the rest of the group here. Um, but yeah, the da- down below gets really interesting. I mean, some of, the, some of these guys, um, yeah, here we go. Let's see what you got. Well, yeah, you change it, change it around a little bit with um, McCullough down here. Um, go ahead, Joe. Talk talk a little bit about your so, um, rationale. You know, I have. Um, you know, it's, it's there's a couple guys in this weight class that like it when when they're good, they're great. Like I'll say, like Nick Farabaugh. Like we're we're kind of we no one spoke about him because he got a tough draw because he finished fourth. But you know, if he you know comes out against Scott Linkowich, like it's you know I think he's a better wrestler than Linkowich. That's why I picked him to win. But like. You know, then he, he gets um, I believe it's John Wright from from um, Abington, who who has recent wins over Reagan McCullough. Uh, and then you see like Ferrari, like, uh, you know, Wright gets some rematch with McCullough and McCullough gets the best of them. I think Wright gets out. Dylan Patrick's having a great second half of the season for Methaxton. He makes that Conti semifinals and then, you know, ultimately gets the, uh, loses to Troy Mack and then um, you know, loses for, to six, for sixth place. But, you know, there, there's just – uh, you know, guys that can go out and win matches. Dan Borzillo is like sneaky good. Like he, uh, if you if you if you make a mistake, he makes you pay for it. Uh, he's not overwhelming um, at this weight, um, but he he can he definitely can wrestle. Um, he's not like I said like when I say overwhelming, he's not physically imposing like a Troy Mack is. But nevertheless, if you if he capitalizes, very capitalistic um, on on other wrestlers' mistakes. Yeah, I think Mac is the uh, the class down here. I think it's just all about him in in his head. I think if he if he's focused and he believes he can win, I think he shouldn't have a problem down there. I think it's important for him to to take third just for seeding next week. I think before sectionals, I think he was ranked somewhere in like the ten to twelve range, you know, on PA PA uh, power. So obviously he's got the talent to kind of be in the mix there, that blood round, and maybe for a shot at uh, you know at a, at a medal in Hershey, but. Uh, if he doesn't get any higher than third, it's going to be some some really tough sledding next week. So I think he has to win that. I think he can. I think Wright, you know, gets out, and I think Prince has a, a shot to get out as well. Yeah, I, I think I Prince's haven't... schedule uh, comes up to hurt him, and the fact he lost, uh, he had a bad loss last week, um, ultimately, you know, seals his fate in this weight class. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, yeah, I, I I agree with that, Joe, with the scheduling piece. I mean. Uh, but at the same time, like this is where I have Mac and Mason in the rematch with Mac taking third. So we agree there. And then I do have John Wright from Abington taking fifth. He, he's a big man. He's a big boy. And when he wants to turn it on, he can. Um, but he, he hasn't wrestled the high level competition either. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs um, in, in at regionals. But I think he's the, he's the fifth best guy. Um, you know, Guzman um, has wins over Prince. 
um, I believe. Um, so, you know, Guzman is going to win some matches down here. And Linkowicz is also dangerous. So, like, I have a little bit different bracket. Um, but I, I think we have the, the, the five top guys correct uh, on, on my sheet. But, uh, again, this is one where you're going to want to watch some of these wrestlebacks, you know. Well, is it time? It's time to go to the big boys. I can't wait. All right. Uh, our proud, again, deepest, deepest weight class in, in District 1. Um, not only do we have um, – we not only have top wrestlers in the region, we've got top wrestlers in the state, um, paced by Calvin Lockman, the one seed. And, um, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm open to all criticism uh, of my bracket. As always, I put it out there. Um, I got Lockman, Bechtel in the finals. Um, I've said it all along. I think Bechtel is, um, you know, uh, will um, is the, one of the top two wrestlers in the in the region, one of the top four wrestlers in the state of this weight class, and uh, sure. he, he's going to put it on display this weekend. Um, you know, uh, he's um, going to match up with Pardo there in the semifinals, and I think you see Bechtel win. Uh, you know, same as he did back in the fall at the Columbus State Duels. Um, but then like you, you look past those top three and then you still have like Joe Collins who, who very well is going to find himself on the podium. And then you also have like the likes of, of Cole Euchre, Dylan Bledsoe, both state, uh, state qualifiers, um, in the past. And it, you know, you got, we got guys and guys and more guys that can not only get the States here, but, but find their way to the podium. Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like six, six, uh, six returning state qualifiers. You know, a couple uh, state medalists. Obviously, Pardo taking third last year, and Bechtold. He was six, right? He was six. Yeah. So, I mean, just you know, a ton of talent. Um, yeah, this is uh, the ultimate hedge my bet right here. But I, I think uh, you know, I'm going to go with Pardo because you know he's a kenneth guy i gotta go with i gotta go with him just because you're going with that one jay but nate you have gone against kenneth all year <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and now you're oh now my you're god i can't believe you're letting that information out right now no, uh, i mean i i tried to tell everybody they weren't a good dual meet team and obviously that that came to fruition but they have a, a lot of good individuals and i say this with hesitation though I, i'm picking pardo you know just to kind of go against you joe but i will say this <laughs> in terms of hedging my bet Pardo has struggled with the bigger, longer, stronger wrestlers. So I think if this if this match goes the way Pardo needs it to, if he can keep it on his feet and get a couple takedowns and kind of control the match that way, I think that's the only way Pardo wins. If this goes to the mat and Bechtel gets on top one or two times, uh, you know, Pardo has 18 losses in his career and 11 are by fall. So he, he struggles when he's underneath, especially against bigger guys. So maybe that's uh, – a poor choice on my part, taking Pardo, because obviously, you know, the chances of him not, not going under Bechtel are pretty slim, um, at least at some point. And obviously, he's lost the last two or three to, to Lockman. But I think if he beats Bechtel in the semis, he's going to go in with some juice and and take one home and, uh, yeah, and, and finally get it done against Lockman. But, uh, I mean, it could go completely opposite. So, you know, I, I think your, your bracket is not crazy. I think any of these three guys, I mean, they're – Three of the best of the state. They're three. They're all three of them are top five in the state. So you can't really be surprised whoever whoever does come out on top. I think if one of those three doesn't win, that would be the the shocker. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. So yeah, I have the the four semifinals the same way, and um, I do think Calvin Lockman is the the best of this group. Um, but I'm not ever betting against a Bechtel brother again, at least against Lockman. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I, I was really torn here because um, I, I don't need the Bechtel brothers chasing me around and, and taunting me at regionals again during the broadcast. <laughs> um, but I do have Lachman winning over Bechtel. I think Pardo, um, you know, th this is, like you said, um, Nate, like Pardo, um, this could be his shining moment too. If he can, he, if he can beat Bechtel and get a shot at Lachman again, um, you know, again, this is, this is going to be – the gym is not emptying out by 285. People are going to be sticking around on uh, Friday night for sure to see how things go down. Uh, and then again, uh, even in, in the wrestleback, because Joe Collins is going to make some noise in Hershey. Uh, so this is, this is a great semifinals. 
Uh, this is a great finals, whoever gets there. But uh, I have Lachman over Bechtold in the finals. All right. This is going to get like uh, bananas down below. <laughs> all right. So I think we can all agree, no matter who finishes <clears throat> first and second, the next guy is going to finish third place. For me, it's Pardo because that's just how my mm-hmm. bracket goes. I'm sure you guys, I'm sure, Glenn, you have Pardo at third, and I'm sure, uh, Nate, you have uh, uh, Bechtold at, at third place. Mm-hmm. So we'll, yeah, we'll I think that that's and, I think, and I have Collins. I have Collins getting there, and then I have um, – uh, sorry for not putting Euchre in there in that Conti quarter, but Euchre and Hudak. Euchre's thing is, you know, I again, I'm just speaking, um, you know, again, um, speculating. I don't know how much he wrestles in the offseason, but he is just so athletic and big and just physical as a heavyweight. You know, you, you watch him in comparison to like a Bechtel and the way he's able to move guys around. Um, he's obviously not the technical wrestler that Bechtold is, but he can just just plow you. I mean, it's no mistake. He's, um, you know, the the uh, he's a great uh, lineman in football. Um, I think he gets um, uh, beat by Collins, and then uh, Euchre beats Bledsoe for fifth place. Well, since uh, Nate has Pardo up upst- upstairs, it's a different uh, conversation. So I have Pardo winning. Uh, you know, over Collins, like you do, Joe. I, I think Collins is going to be on the podium in Hershey, and he's probably going to be, uh, you know, right there. Probably, probably in the fifth spot is my guess. If I, if I, I haven't, you know, the the bracket. We don't know what the bracket looks like uh, in Hershey, but I, I definitely have, um, you know, Collins, Pardo, Bechtold, and Lockman on the podium. Just don't know really the order. I know there's two guys out there that, uh, you know, kind of ha- have been a little bit ahead of everybody. Um, but still, those guys are right there. And then, you know, that Euchre match against Bledsoe could go either way. I have Bledsoe. I, I don't know why. I just think that uh, at least one Garnet Valley guy is going to get out. Um, and, and it's going to be Bledsoe over Euchre. So, uh, but you're right. I mean, the Euchres are, are dangerous. Uh, they're big. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure he, he, he wants to get, get the stage and get on the podium. So, um, that's going to be a great match. I mean, sometimes it's really tough call in the finals when we're looking over at that fifth place match, Joe. I mean, we, we've, how many years have we done that? Um, just looking over there and watching guys just letting it all go um, to try and get that last spot to Hershey. So, um, again, this is just a great deep weight class. Um, you know, kind of like you said, 107 and, and 285. Um, they're, they're just great weight classes. Yeah, I have the same five as you do, you know, just different order. But I think those are the top five getting out. Uh, you know, Euchre obviously being the wild card, just, you know, seeing how he kind of bounces back after not being in the postseason last year. I think uh, I'd like to see Abariah and Bledsoe go one more time. I think they've wrestled four times in their careers. I think it's been overtime, at least at least one overtime in every one of them there. Those guys just seem to always match up. I think they, uh, they met last year at the first round of regionals, too, so... Uh, I think it'd be fitting for one of those guys to, you know, to have to go through the other to, to have a shot at states. Uh, two really good football players, a lot of good football players in this bracket right here, especially on the, the bottom half. It's kind of a crime that Bechtold and Lockman don't play football with that with that body type. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's going to be some serious earth movement with these guys, and uh, I, I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, so I mean, we may as well talk a little bit about the team race too. Why we have a moment. Um, you know, I, I just feel like Quakertown's going to insert themselves in the conversation uh, with Penridge and Council Rock South. I don't know if anyone else can can you know get in the conversation, but um, what are your guys' thoughts about you know those three teams? I think it'd be a shocker if those weren't the top three in some order, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what it comes down to. You know, there's a lot of those matches like. You know, Ike Williams winning winning some matches for them. Uh, you know, they're gonna need to lean on him. It's it's gonna be not being won by the stars of those teams. It's gonna be won by those guys on the backside of those brackets. You know, can a can a AJ Bot win some matches for Rock South? Can Scott Link which win some matches for Rock South? You know, it's not gonna be like Beck's gonna uh, Becker is gonna do his job. Ryder's gonna do his job. Lenahan's gonna do his job. 
Uh, you know, all those guys, uh, can Eddie Alvarez win some matches? So, you know, that's where it comes down to is, is what, and, and then you look at Penridge, like, you know, I yeah, believe Danny Ro, Ro and McFadden, Ro and McFadden, know. Danny Metzler can, you know, every point's going to count. And then you, you know, you said like, uh, you know, you look at, uh, Quaker town, like, yeah, your, your, your hammers have to do what they have to do. Like, you know, if, if Quaker town is four regional finalists, um, you have to imagine they're in the driver's seat heading into Saturday night. So, I mean, that's a possibility at 121, 145, 160 and, and heavyweight. So, you know, that you look at from those, from that perspective and they're going to be there, uh, you know, you, you again, I, I'm not saying they're, they're, they're locks four for four, but um, if I were a betting man, like those are before guys I would bet would make the regional final just because um, the three uh, in Ziegler um, uh, guy and Lockman are are that good and carol just has a better path well i mean carol's gonna get bro hart in the semis but again that that's you know you look at that match right there that's gonna be one that could decide a team race as well bro yeah. hart gets in that final and you know the top half that you know the t- whoever wins that that semifinal probably wins that regional title yeah we could see a really tight team race um that we haven't seen in a long time with three teams uh every now and then you see two teams really neck and neck but this could be one where we see three teams really close in points and we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, I think that, you know, for Council Rock South, um, you know, their goal uh, has been all year is to win a state title. I mean, obviously, we can obviously we can talk about Mutarelli now. If he's in that lineup, uh, it looks a little different for them uh, to be in contention. But uh, with him out, uh, it kind of brings Penridge and Quakertown right there in the conversation. So, um, yeah, you're, you're right, Joe. It could be a, a situation where you see Quakertown um, with, with, you know, four finals, possibly four champs, um, but Council Rock South or Penn Ridge winning, uh, you know, the, the regional title because they can do it on the back end. Nate, what do you think? I mean, I, I can't, you know, I, I never counted Kennedy out all year uh, as a tournament team. Um, you know, I think they, they can put up some points too. Uh, obviously, Sun Valley has won the, you know, the league out there. They won the, the, the district section. Uh, but I, I don't see them really being in this race uh, at regionals. Um, and I see Kennett kind of being in it if, if some of the things happen the way we talked about. So, you know, the, that that's that would be good for them to to be in that top five grouping. Yeah, I think uh, I think if some of your predictions come true, if McBride and uh, Hogan work their way to the finals, like you predicted, I think Penridge is going to be, you know, right there. I don't know if those, those guys win that, but, you know, like you said, some of those some of those head to heads are going to be really really important, and yeah, I mean if if Kenneth just has the perfect day, if if Boyer finds his way to the finals, if Pardo finds his way to the finals, if Langle can find his way to the finals and you know reverse the Carroll decision, all of a sudden Kenneth, I don't know if they have enough depth to uh, to contend for the actual title, but they could you know flirt with the top three four if if everything goes perfectly for them. But that's obviously a, a tough task with only having five six guys here. So yeah, I think it's the three guys from the East. Yeah, three guys from the east for sure, and then and any no particular order after that, you're going to see uh, Kennett, Owen J, and Boyertown. Boyertown because the number of guys they have there that are going to go there and win matches. Um, Owen J because of the, their top level talent, or, and um, you know Kennett for the same exact reason. Kennett could find themselves with like three, you know, uh, any Kennett and or Owen J can find themselves with three regional finalists. Yeah, so and, and Sun Valley, for that matter, a couple three champs. Time, but- so yeah. a little bit of yeah. trivia for you, Nate. It takes an hour and 40 minutes from the Perkisy area to get to Oxford. And it takes about an hour and 10 minutes to get to Hershey. Tell me what's wrong there. Uh, that was, I mean, hey, it's a beautiful place to stay. Well, where, where would you rather spend your weekend than Oxford, Pennsylvania? Well, I'm going to be in some Hershey chips. And, uh, I'm going to be in Maryland. There's some nice cheap gas in Maryland. You got the Chesapeake Bay. You got Hershey chips. I mean, you got a little Royal mushroom Farms. soil smell. Yeah, I'll get, some, I'll get some mushrooms on my way up to the school in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, take your time getting there, all those back roads, watch out for the buggies, say hi to Bill Rudick. It's going to be great. <laughs> he better have a camera in his hand out there, not hey. an official strike. <laughs> hey, he's filling in for me. I got to miss the second half of Saturday, so Bill Rudick will be on duty. So, All right, nice. Yep. All right, folks, that's what we got here. I uh, want to take a shot at OW? Ooh. I mean, wow. do you think uh, the do you think the coaches will wait long enough to vote for two eighty five? Well, I think I mean I was going to say it's coming from one hundred seven or two eighty five. I don't know, but I mean, but it's listen, probably going to be one seventy two winner. 
Yeah. Because nobody's going to wait around back. for 285. Right. Uh, you know, I think the winner either 172, like, uh, where what I'm, unless like Colin Guy is just, just blows through his bracket and just, yeah, I was going to um, say, yeah, you can't count you know, guys. No upsets. Um, you know, yeah. and, and Dylan Beckles in that same conversation, he's going to blow through it and potentially could blow through his bracket. Um, but then you also, like you guys mentioned, like 72, 285, and 107 are all, and again, you could, I mean, you could have someone that catches fire and wins a regional title. It yeah. comes out of like a, you know, um, that, that none of us were expecting. Yeah, you know, that so, OW yeah. has to go to the best wrestler of that tournament. So that 39, we, that 39 weight class, you know, um, you could see any one of those guys that winning it because it depends who you have to go through. Like you got to go through, you know, two tough guys or training state qualifiers to get there. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna go with the winner at 172. I'm gonna say Sam in my pick, Sam Gotro is your OW at the regional wrestling tournament in the southeast region. That, oh, that's bold. That feels like the most most uh you know easiest pick just because I think the re- the coaches will see that and uh I don't think they're gonna wait around to see who wins two eighty five. normally the uh, the ballots are counted by then, right? So shame not for the big really. boys this year. Not, not all but, the coaches are voting, it's just the committee. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know how it works. And we'll still be yeah. there, trust me. <laughs> all right well hey yeah, there yeah, you go, we'll Johnny Pardo. all right uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, well played. Morrison, that's fine we got pardo Cutro, and and morrison we got we got we're well represented here can it happen yes. good job hopefully they're all standing next to each other in uh, in hershey on the podium oh too, yeah wherever they and that, and at, the, at the end of the day all this that's all that matters we get as many guys that hurt the yeah. right guys at hershey are going to go put uh you know put themselves on the podium you know at the end yeah. of the day while this is uh, friendly rivalries and and whatnot of wrestling in District One, the end game uh, is always uh, at least where I'm from, and I think you guys feel the same way. Is like let's get District One, uh, let's continue to move forward, let's continue to get guys to Hershey and get yep. guys on the podium. Absolutely, and Absolutely. Uh, Mike, good luck with this one. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, you know, apologies for technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, looking forward to some feedback on the on the forum as always, um, and. Uh, you know, that's about it, guys. Uh, Glenn, Nate, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for uh, spending two hours with me on a Wednesday night through the storms to uh, to make this happen. Uh, looking forward to seeing everyone this weekend down in Oxford. Safe travels, everyone. Take care and have a great night. Uh, good luck, everyone. Down there.